Hello, my name is Bob Hodge. I'm president of Advanced Spindle Technology, and I wanted to share with uh, you today some of the finer points of what we do as we go through and evaluate spindles and, um, and repair them. And it's a partial answer to the, uh, the uh, tagline we keep at getting asked about what do we mean by better than new. So what I'd like to do to begin is to uh, go through a little bit of a lesson on bearings. Uh, spindles are the heart of the machine tool, uh, but what people seem to miss sometimes is the bearings are the heart of the spindle. So we pay particular attention to the bearings, and one of the things we do when we evaluate the architecture of the bearings within a spindle that we're repairing is we look for opportunities to make that spindle better than um, uh, what it uh, came out from the factory at. Um, because factory produced machine tools are meant for a lot of different applications. And what that really says is they really aren't optimized for any. So we look for those opportunities. And one of the ways we do that is we evaluate contact angles in bearings. And what you see here is a, a bearing here in the center. Um, and uh, it, they're pretty simple. There's an inner ring, an outer ring, a, a, a retainer, and some balls, but those balls contact the raceways at a given contact angle. And one of the things that I want to call your attention to is the difference between 15 and 25, which are the most common uh, contact angles in bearings. There are others. There's 30 degrees, there's 17, there's 18. There's even one manufacturer that uh, is a 17 and a half. But uh, for the most part, we're looking at, uh, at 15 degree and 25 degree. And one of the things I want to, uh, to get into is the reason this is important is that the 25 degree contact angle bearings will carry a heavier axial load. They have more axial capacity. And now that's at the uh, sacrifice of some radial capacity. The 15 degree has less axial capacity because of the difference in the contact angle. And it has more radial capacity and stiffness. And you have this diagram here. What you see here in black would represent the, uh, the vectors uh, the axial vector and the radial vector for a 15 degree bearing. And then here in the red, you see superimposed uh, quite a bit more, not quite double, but uh, substantially more axial capacity in the 25 uh, than the 15 would have. So the reason this is important is because of the preloads and the load carrying capacity of the bearings. Here you see a, uh, a typical uh, spindle configuration. It's a fixed floating arrangement with a pair of back-to-back -back bearings in the front that are fixed that locates the shaft axially, and then a floating pair of bearings in the back. And in this particular case, the, the preloads are balanced um, between the, uh, the two front bearings and they're balanced between the two back bearings. It's very simple. It's a um, uh, a very reliable um, setup for a spindle. Here you have a, uh, another uh, fixed floating arrangement, but the difference is, is this one has got what we call a quad set of bearings. Instead of two bearings back to back, you have four bearings back to back. And these four bearings um, locate the spindle shaft axially, and these back bearings float as the, the shaft expands because of uh, heat. Uh, they float in the housing to allow that expansion to take place. So this is a, a really good way to increase the capacity of a spindle. Okay, here is a, uh, another fixed floating arrangement for a spindle, uh, just like the ones that we looked at before. But in this particular case, uh, we have a triplex set of bearings here as the, uh, the, fixed, uh, the fixed configuration. And this can be a little bit problematic because uh, you have two sets of bearings that are reacting forces in one direction, and that is countered by a single bearing uh, reacting in the other direction. 
The floating pair of bearings in the rear does not carry any axial load. Uh, that's only for, uh, for radial support. Um, and when we see these triplex sets of bearings, typically what we find is all three bearings will have the same contact angle. So what that means is uh, you have, even with no loads, just mounted in the spindle, you have the built-in preloads of two bearings being reacted by the preload of one bearing. So this one bearing in the back is essentially doing double duty of the front bearings. It's doing twice the preload of the two front bearings. Unlike the quad set of bearings that we looked at before, the preloads aren't balanced in these bearings. So this back bearing becomes a weak link in the spindle. So if we can, you see here there's a little spacer, but there's not enough of a spacer to be able to put in a quad set of bearings. So what we would do to improve the situation, since we can't put in a quad set of bearings, we would put in two 15 degree contact angle bearings up here in the front, and we would react that with a 25 degree contact angle bearing to better balance the preloads of the entire system so you don't have as much of a weak link built in. Uh, <clears throat> this next, um, this next uh, slide here, uh, is a duplex pair in the front, a duplex pair in the back, um, still uh, fixed floating, uh, just like the, uh, the first one that we looked at, but here you have uh, an automatic tool change spindle which has a drawbar in it. The other issue that we run into and what we look at is when you do a tool actuation, you push on the, uh, the drawbar, you collapse the drawbar springs, and all that force, which can be substantial, you could be talking about 1,500 or 2,000 pounds or more, all that force gets reacted into this number two bearing here. Uh, it tends to unload the number one bearing and it loads up very heavily the uh, number two bearing. Again, these back bearings don't transmit any axial uh, reaction. So, what you're really doing is every time you do a tool change, you're loading this bearing statically because the shaft's not rotating and you're unloading this every time you do a tool change. And if this is a 15 degree contact angle bearing, uh, you can be overloading that bearing. So oftentimes if we find a 15 degree contact angle bearing here, we will increase that to either 25 or even a 30 degree contact angle bearing to be able to uh, to better withstand those forces. Here is a, um, a duplex pair fixed and floating arrangement again, but it's spring preloaded. Uh, the front bearings here, again, locate the shaft axially. Uh, this one happens to be air oil lubricated. In this particular spindle, you have a spring preloaded configuration where you have a tandem pair of bearings in the front they're both reacting uh, the loads from the spindles going into the spindle, and then that's reacted by a tandem pair of bearings uh, in the back with spring preload. Uh, so what happens is the spring pushes on these bearings, which translates that to the shaft and loads the front bearings. So what you have here is a mismatch in size and capacity. You can see the difference in the size of the front two bearings versus the size of the back two bearings. So if all these bearings are 15 degree contact angle, then there's a high likelihood that these small back bearings are overloaded to be able to put enough preload in the front bearings. So what we would do in this case is we would likely use 15 degree contact angle bearings in the front, and we would go to 25 degree contact angle bearings in the back to better balance those preloads from the front to the back. So thank you for letting me share that with you. Uh, we appreciate uh, your time and your interest. If there is anything that uh, AST can do, uh, if you have a spindle that you would like to send in for an evaluation uh, and a potential improvement, then please let us know. Thank you.